Hi. Hi there. Huge welcome to this live event titled Evans Intelligent Invoice Processing to showcase the power of no code and RPA. My name is Elizabeth Tong and I lead Bemi Pack, the House of No Code in the ANZ region. Yes, huge welcome and joining together with this is myself, Tin, from FPT Software, bringing our proud RPA offering in AKBOD. Welcome all, Liz and myself will be your hosts for today. Thank you, Tin. Such a pleasure to be hosting with you today. So today you're going to see the power of RPA tool Akabot and WEM, no code enterprise plat development platform together. Before we actually get into the actual demo, a bit of introduction about the two companies. WEMAPAC is a world leader in empowering enterprises across multiple industries to build custom applications and automate business processes with its no code enterprise application development platform called WEM. The core mission of WEM APAC is to accelerate business velocity, and it offers 10 times faster application development when compared to traditional methods, while also lowering your total cost of ownership by a third. Thank you, Liz. Well, as for FPT, we are a global technology and IT services provider with headquarters in Vietnam. We have more than 20,000 employees with presence across 26 countries. So as a pioneer in digital transformation, the company delivers world-class services in the smart factory, digital transformation, RPA, artificial intelligence, cloud, and so on. AKBOT platform is a robotic process automation platform that provides comprehensive solutions for automation and digitization to help your businesses to improve the productivity and saving operational costs. Thanks, Dan. What a great introduction about the two companies. So today, you're going to see the benefits of these two platforms, WEM and Akabot, come together. The combined efficiency of the RPA platform Akabot and WEM no code platform has been quite well received in the market and we've done many solutions together across the globe for many organizations. Yes, uh, thanks Liz. Uh, our partnership, you know, with just a year into it, both companies have jointly worked on some challenging projects in the global markets across different countries. So for the context of today's demo, we're going to understand the pain points and frustrations of a person in an organization who has to do manual entry from invoices into an application built on WEM. So to set the context, we're going to watch a video that'll set the scene for the use case and the demo that you're going to see today. So let's watch the video together. 45 and works for the accounts division at a manufacturing organization. Hi, Jay. Well, so much for greeting your colleagues. You seem frustrated. What is it? Tell us. It is already 7th of September today, and I have not yet closed the previous month's accounts. Oh, but why? What's the problem? The company made 135 purchases in the last week of the month, and it takes around 25 minutes to process one invoice. How am I supposed to process all of them before a month closing? I am just so tired. Okay. But what if I tell you? that you can automate the whole work you're doing with the help of robotic process automation. But how can we do it? With Akabot and Wim APAC, it is actually very simple. And how fast can this Akabot do the processing? As fast as 10 seconds for each invoice. That means your 135 invoices can be processed within some 23 minutes. The time that you take to process one invoice, Akabot can do all of them in the same time. Isn't that awesome? Oh, the events has already started. Let's see how intelligent invoice processing works live with Akabot and WEM. What a video. Well, awesome. Um, in the video, you might recognize the tedious nature of the manual task data entry processes from invoice into multiple systems. Well, yeah, this is not only time consuming, 
and uh, it reduces also the employee productivity, but also keeps the employee away from doing more strategic and creative tasks, like perhaps analyzing and seeing trends in the data. Thanks. Yes, you can really identify with the frustration of this employee. Manual entry is also very error prone. The wasted hours and frustration and actually finding the incorrect data entries and then rectifying that in the system is a huge wasted effort in organizations. Well, that's why that is where RPA comes to the rescue. So before we're going to show you a demo of automating this entire process, we would like to show you how easy it is to develop on Akabot Studio, the RPA platform first, and then on WEM, the no-code enterprise platform. So over to you, Tim. Thank you, Liz. So I'm going to share my screen and walk you guys through the RPA platform, AKBot, and show you how easy it is to develop what we call as robots. So here, um, my screen is now visible and I hope um, we can all see the AKBot Studio, um, the product. So you are now looking at the AKBot Studio component of the AKBot platform. So this is basically what we call as a designer tool. Well, with this uh, screen, you are going to design and formalize your robot. So you're going to create a script and then the robot will take the script and automate the process. So as you can see here, um, on the left-hand side of this uh, screen, you see a lot of um, activities. Toolbox. Um, so with RPA and AKBot, we have this concept as activity. Imagine, that, imagine uh, them as basically pre-built actions that is ready made from the product. For example, we're talking about automation, like software automation. We want something that can replicate human actions on a computer. Uh, so with that being said, this product equips us with ready-made actions such as clicking, typing, opening browsers, reading emails, uh, opening folders, rename it, deleting it, so on and so forth, all are ready-made. And the only thing we have to do is just to drag and drop them into our designing area and um, configure it. So AKBot Studio follows a no-code and low-code concept where we basically just drag and drop our actions and put them together in order to form our script to automate. So that's, that's the concept. Um, so right now, I'm going to show you a real quick, you know, hands-on coding that replicates a process of, you know, opening the system and logging to it via a browser. So I'm going to start. So on the left-hand side, um, I'm planning to do a, an automation that I'm going to open a browser, put in a uh, URL, a link, uh, access to it, and then log in by inputting the credential. So the first thing I'm going to do as a human being, I will think of opening a browser. So I'll do the same thing with this automation platform. I drag and drop an open browser activity from my left-hand side toolbox. I drag and drop it and put it inside my middle designing tool area. So here I have an open browser um, activity. And I wanted to open a system, which is basically I just need to get its URL. To do it in AKBot, I just copy and paste the link, the URL, inside this open browser activity. Of course, put it inside double quote, and that should be it. Nothing much else to do. I may want to do some other configuration as to maximize the browser upon opening it, and that's it. We can try here right now um, the first activity that I did. So if I hover my mouse and click on start, I click now, the robot is going to run on this machine. So you see a new browser is being opened and it is now opening WAM AKBot, you know, um, 
system, uh, a website that was pre-built by WAM. So this is how easy it is first to just opening a browser and, and access to a page. Just one activity, uh, copy and paste the link and that should do. So I want now to do uh, uh, some other actions with you by perhaps putting some information into the username and password field and log in into the system uh, using the robot. So I go back to AKBot Studio. Um, I know that I have two fields and normally I would uh, need to type into the username and password. So with that being said, inside AKBot Studio, I will search for activity called type. And here I have some actions for typing. So I'm gonna drag and drop an activity called type into and put it inside my open browser container, right? Because I want to type inside my browser. So that's the thing. And now I need to train the bot. I need to tell it where I want to, to make the typing. So I will click on pick target element, uh, click it again. And now I will hover my mouse. You can see wherever my mouse is moving, there is a red um, highlighted rectangle is being focused and displayed. So I will like to put my mouse and focus inside the username field. So I hover to that and I left click to confirm. And that's it. I click on OK. And that's the way I tell the robot to, hey, I want to type into this username field area. So now I'm going to put some you know, value into it. Um, as for the demonstration, I will put a um, sample admin as my username, save it, and let's try to run it, see how it works. I'm going to click start again. It opens a browser. And yes, if I open back the browser, you see it just input the admin information. That's how easy it is. So I'm going to do the same thing, but this time for the other field as in password. So I go back to my studio. I drag and drop again the type into activity inside my browser container. I again select the area by clicking on pick target element. I hover my mouse. It's highlighted. I left click to confirm. I click OK to reconfirm. And now I just put some value for my password. Admin, that's for a sample name. Um, I now search for another uh, activity as for a click activity. I drag and drop inside my container. And now I want to click on the login button. So I do it again, pick target element, hover my mouse to the login button highlighted left click to confirm click OK and that's it so now I have my script completed opening a browser put in some information click login so I'm just going to close everything and run this bot again to verify I'm going to click start right now and you will see a new Chrome browser is being open it puts in the information click on login and voila. So you see it is now landing us to the web system um, web page. So that's how I create a robot by simply drag and drop some activities to do a simple login uh, steps. I'm super, super impressed. That was just awesome. Just showing us how easy it is to build uh, using Akaba Studio platform. Thank you so much for that, Tim. So appreciate that. Now over to Tanmoy. Tanmoy Moitra, who is a WEM technologist, Tanmoy is going to use WEM, the no-code platform, to create some graphs that from on the WEM application that you showed us. So, uh, Tim, uh, so these graphs uh, that Tanmoy will, will, will build will help us to interpret some of the invoice data that is going to come through from the Akabot Robo when it's run. So over to you, Tanmoy, to show us the WEM platform and to build the various graphs. <coughs> Thank you, Liz.
So Tanmoy is going to share his screen and take us first to the WEM Modeler IDE. But before that, over to you. Thank you. So this is the application that is created on WEM uh, platform. Um, and this has a pre-populated, a few data is pre-populated. So let me take you to the platform. WEM is a true no-code platform, which is uh, secured, highly scalable, could be placed on cloud or on private clouds. Uh, now, as you can see, this is a completely web-based uh, modeler, so you don't need to install anything. <clears throat> this is the data first. So as you can see, there, there is a workflow. We call this workflow, and this is list. List is nothing but a tables uh, in the traditional language. So this is a data first approach in this uh, no-code platform. Web is a no-code platform which helps you create enterprise level applications handling huge data. So uh, there are like terabytes of data if you want to handle that is also possible through uh, this platform. Also, it is pretty secure because we have, uh, you can uh, integrate it with other applications like Salesforce, CRM, SAP, all the integrations are possible. Out of the box, SAML and OAuth authentication is there, which means that you can integrate with uh, Active Directory. You can easily do that through this. Now, this gives you all sort of security from uh, the application perspective. Web is also GDPR compliant and ISO 2701 certified platform. So you don't have to worry about uh, DOS attacks, security issues, SQL injection, the platform takes care of all those things. You just have to implement the code. Now to implement the code, the basic point where we go is with a workflow. You create a data model first, the tables, create the relationship, and then we go to the workflow. So as part of today's uh, uh, demo, what we will do is on the screen, I want to Right now, I can see the invoices that are generated in the system, but I'm not able to see the products. So let me quickly add a button here and see if I can view the products. And just uh, so you can see how easy it is to develop on the web platform. So it's a complete drag and drop. So what I want to do is I want the button on click of which I will say this is as few details. <clears throat> so I am within the web page UI and making changes to the UI as of now. So I have added a button and then I can change the color. Formatting is available. You can have any kind of formatting on the web platform because you can implement your own style sheets. So you can just import your style sheets and the layout would be applied. Now I have uh, added a button. So the UI part is complete. So I save the UI and then I go, what should happen on the click is basically what I want to do now. So I, I would go and say, I need to create a new web page, which I will say as invoice products view. Within this, I would just go and create a layout here. The layout is basically, as you will see, I just, I have all the invoice items in this table called as invoice items. So from that, I need the product, the invoice date, the product uh, total and the quantity. Now, as you can see, the invoice items are basically a reference field here. Reference is basically a foreign key in the traditional language. So what I want to do is I don't have the product name in this table. So what I will do, I will go here, say, no, I, I want the product name from this table. So I drag the field and validate if my, uh, 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 this query is correct. And then I say, okay. And then I say from the invoice, I want to go to the invoice table and get one of the fields from there, which would be an invoice date. Okay, so now my UI is complete. And one more thing is required that 
I want to see the data of only the selected records. So I would be click, uh, clicking on this row. So I sh should see the products only for April 1st, 2022 invoice. So for that, we add an expression. The expression is I want to see invoice where the ID of the invoice <clears throat> is equal to the current ID wherever the current row is. Validate and I am done. So I now have to, I have created the UI. Now I have to link the flow. So I said that when I click view details, at that point, I need to go here. One more thing I forgot to add here is a button to close this page. So let me quickly go and do that. Say close and I will mark it red, save. So I, from the invoice, that is this main page, I want to go to the, this page when view details button is clicked and I want to come back when the close button is clicked. So my development is completed. Now to move to the staging environment, I just have to do a So that's completely CICD enabled, isn't it? A click of a button and you're moving what you did on the development environment to the staging and from staging to production is also a simple click of, click of a button, isn't it? Absolutely. So you can promote your code from the development to the staging to the live just by clicking on which all environment you want to publish. And the publishing doesn't take time as you will see now. So in uh, traditional... Uh, development environment, you have to bring the production down and do all sort of things to do a production release. So all those issues are not here. Now, as you can see, we see the button that we added on the screen and let's click here. Okay, so we are able to see the products for that particular invoice. Now, I want to do one more thing is that I don't want to see it as a complete page. I want to see it as a pop-up and let's see how we can do that on the web platform. So I say show as overlay and I will publish the code. Okay. Now let me refresh the page and there you go. So we have changed a web page into a model pop-up just by a click of a button. So that is how powerful the platform is wherein you just have all the, uh, basic things that you need in development is already available. You just need to focus on your creating your workflows and the layouts. That's the ease which web brings to the uh, platform. So now, as you can see, we have already done this UI change. Now I want to create a graph as Liz was mentioned. So the next step again, I need to have a button on the web page, which will say, I want to see the products trend. And let me just do this. So I have created a button and I have create, created an event also. In traditional language, we have button events, right? So that is what I have just now created as button exit. So I will go here and say that once the button is created, which uh, click, which button, the product strength. I will go into this product graph workflow. This is another workflow. So here, basically the data summarization has been done uh, based on various calculations, as you can see. I will just uh, zoom in a little so you can see the flow. And then here we are having another web page. So in this web page, I want to create a graph. Okay, let's uh, first see the existing graph that is there and then we take the next step. I will go ahead and publish this one. And okay, so the product prints button has come and we said on click, I need to see a different page which has the trends. <coughs> Now, 
here, I can basically go ahead and do various kind of, see basically these are the products that is available in the system and when I'm viewing, I'm just saying, okay, I just want to view the line 29. So all the others, I will just go ahead and So there you see, you can see the trend of how the product has been sold over the months. Now let me go back and okay. add one more graph to this, a bar graph. And for that, what I will do is we have something called as widgets. So I'm dragging a widget and in that I have a widget. Now this widget is responsible for creating the layout of the graph. All I have to do is pass this widget, the tables through which the data would be extracted and it would be shown on the layout. So I have my graph data in this graph data table. The X axis would be shown based on, I want the months to be as the X axis of this bar graph. And then on the Y, I want to see the total. Now this is a drill down. Uh, what I mean by drill down, you will see in a second, but a drill down for drill down data, I need the, this is the table that I will use for this drill down. One more thing here, you can see table inside the table. So this is how you can create multiple layers of tables. So foreign referencing, etc., can happen. Also, you can uh, do the foreign referencing to external tables as well. But for now, draw, uh, drill down list X would be the product name. And the Y would be the sales for that particular month. I have done the changes and let's go ahead and publish it. So Tanmoy, this is going to show you the data that has already manually been entered into the VIM application prior to us running the bot that we are going to do. Exactly. Right? So, correct. So right now, so as you can see, the graph came in. So we created a drill down graph in minutes actually with the data uh, that we already have in the system. And I can go ahead and see here that, okay, which is the, in Jan, what are the products that were sold? And I can go back and do this for the other one. So this is what I meant by the drill down graph. That's so right excellent, Tanmore. So right now, if you see, we have data till August and August is 521252. That's great. I think it's great to note that number because we are going to now um, move on to the next stage of the demo. Uh, but before that, I want to thank you, uh, Tanmoy, for showing us how easy it is to do the development on the WEM platform, just like on Akabot. Both are drag and drop systems and you can quickly progress your development without really writing too much lines of code. That's just amazing. This is These are great uh, products. So what we're going to do now is to move to the second part of the demo. We are going to actually see the Aka bot in action, the bots actually working with the invoice. So over to you, Tin, to show us the, uh, the piece of the rob robots being in action. Over to you, Tin. Thank you, Tanma. Thank you, Liz, for ending this over. All right, so now that you have the context of uh, how easy it is to work uh, on AKBot automation and web um, app creation. So I will now show you a quick demonstration um, that we have previously prepared. So this is a demonstration to replicate the real invoice processing process on um, different companies. So um, what we are going to show is that we're going to have a bot that is going to you know, receive invoices from multiple systems. Um, for this case, it will get invoices from um, a, a mailbox, and then it will extract the information, get the um, valuable information out of the invoice, and then put it into WEM system. So that's that's the flow. And right now, I will start replicating this process first by sending an email to the robot mailbox for it to receive invoices. So I'm going to start manually sending an email, just like a um, accountant in a company. Okay. 
Lem system. So this is my email. And now I am going to attach uh, some invoices. I'm going to attach these five invoices. And I also wanted to show you um, the actual invoices um, on this image form. So as you can see, um, these invoices are coming from um, different suppliers and coming in different formats, or I'd say templates. So different companies, of course, they have their, their different uh, way of creating invoices. And this will be the context of this demonstration. So um, I'm going to send uh, this mail with these attached invoices to the robot's mailbox. All right, I just click on send and it will take a few seconds um, for the, for the you know, mailbox to receive this message from me. And upon receiving it, the bot will autom automatically be triggered because it is monitoring this mailbox um, as I configure on, a, um, on every minute. So just a few seconds for it to deliver. And once we receive this email, you see it's now coming to the mailbox. Um, the robot is going to trigger the automation. You see right now there is a um, black screen that is being opened. That goes to say that the bot has received a signal um, as an email being received. So it will now start the automation. So you see it is running. It is preparing some um, libraries for it to run. And the first thing the robot is going to do is to get that email and download all of those five invoice attachments. Once it downloads those five invoice attachment, uh, the bot will then perform with the extraction. So yeah, it just start the automation. Uh, it is preparing some configuration and starting some libraries and now proceeding with the actual email downloading. Right, um, so it has completed the downloading of those attachment. Now it is going to extract the information from those invoices. And um, as for this part, uh, the robot is going to use what we call a smart OCR, smart optical character recognition to extract the information out of it because it is coming from different uh, like variation templates. So it requires some smart um, document understanding and extraction. So now I am showing you uh, what's happening behind the extraction. So you see, this is actually one of the invoice that is being extracted. So behind the curtains, you see actually the system is able to recognize this table, all of the columns, rows, and the headers. Basically, it is able to get the, um, the product name, the item, the quantity, description, price, so on and so forth. So this is how the um, smart OCR comes in to help the bot to understand and extract uh, valuable um, data. So we have a total of five invoices. Uh, it'll take um, one or two minutes to complete the extraction. And once it is done, it will open the WEM system as we just saw earlier, log in, and then perform the data entry. So now you would see, yes, um, the web system is being opened. It logs in real quick. And now it is navigating us to the um, um, invoice creation module. So we are here and the robot now will do the data entry for us. So um, there are a total of five different invoices, so it, it will, create five, you know, 
item on this web page, you see it is putting the product name, the quality, its rate, its invoice date, and the customer name, which was actually, you know, retrieved from that actual invoice images we had earlier. So it goes one by one. You see, it's it's basically navigating human actions, but of course, on a speed that is, I'd say, ten times faster. Um, and it goes one by one. It puts the information um, navigating between fields, clicking a button. It's basically a sequence of actions that we just uh, had a um, hands-on coding earlier, but now we're just putting it together to form a end-to-end um, -end flow. So yeah, I mean, with this part, you can imagine the, um, the benefit of automation. It helped us to automate and fasten the uh, process. And um, yeah, this is actually not limited to only a web page, but we can also use it to any system, may it be desktop application or anything that has a user interface. But yeah, you, you see the demonstration and you also notice a pop-up that is being displayed. This goes to say that the bot has completed with the demonstration completed the data entry of those five invoices into one system. So that's that's how quick and easy it is to have a bot to automate the invoice processing process. Thank you. Tin, that was amazing. What a fantastic demonstration of RPA capability and OCR recognition. It's amazing. I loved how the bot just took a few minutes to run to get the data from the invoice and then put it into the web application it was completely automated so remarkable so efficient done in minutes thank you tin thank you yeah so what you can see like what you know what usually take hours and hours to do uh by human can be now reduced to just minutes by having this automation you know in place this will help us to save operational, uh, save processing time and definitely reduce operational costs for any businesses. That's right. Imagine how that adds up. If you were to do the manual work over months and years, the employee can now actually focus on what matters most, isn't it? That is focus on the business uh, like they could perhaps look at graphs and study the data instead of actually doing manual tedious tasks. And this is where I would love to invite um, Tanmoy back and then show us the um, uh, web graph that has been created to just look at the trend information with the new information that's been added in by the bot into the web application. Over to you, Tanmoy. Uh, thank you, Liz. So uh, now the data is, has been added. What I uh, had quickly done in the background is I took a snapshot of the previous data. So this was 521252. And let's now go and see how, where we stand. So there you go. So you see the August data has been added here. And I can go in and see what all uh, data has been added. So as you can see, there is a uh, sales of this line uh, this product, line 28, majorly. Now, to analyze my product sales, what I can do is I can now go ahead and say, okay, I don't want to see line 29. And I don't want to see line 28. And there you go. So I can go ahead and basically change the data view at runtime and view how the data or how the product has been performing over the months. So uh, VEM is just uh, not only for, so we can go ahead and create dashboards through VEM, uh, get information from various sources and then show it on a dashboard built on VEM. Or if you want, you can go ahead and create enterprise level uh, workflow applications where you might require permissions, user roles, field level encryptions, uh, handling a huge volume of data. So all these are possible through the web platform. Thank you, Tanmoy. I think for us, what's been great is just knowing that the employee can spend time analyzing the data, find out 
which products are doing well, take some strategies to actually grow the business instead of wasting time manually entering. Thank you for that, Tanmoy. Uh, what we're going to do now is actually look at a real use case uh, where RPA was implemented. Tim, do you want to just talk us through that before we play the video? Yeah, sure. So um, um, part of the demo basically shows a snippet of, of our actual use cases. So we have done like invoice processing for a lot of clients. One of the, the most successful use case for, for, is for a client in the retail industry that we did um, in APAC region. So we that's where we apply um, automation to automate the uh, validation of invoices and data entry. And we were able to process over 2 million sets of invoices per year and gain a lot of results. So the video will help us to visualize and see the actual story. Um, use cases. So, um, invoice processing for retail group. Um, so they were receiving around 100,000 plus invoices per month. Uh, but in a total year, it's around nearly 2 million sets of invoices that requires, you know, um, validating and, and um, uh, you know, and enter into the system. So with AKBot, we created a solution to receive all of those invoices from a mailbox, having it um, extracted with smart OCR, um, compare it with the um, information from the accounting system, and send a report of the um, you know uh, differences in in regards to amounts or like items or like if the numbers are not matching. So this part is where we have the um, uh, extraction, and this part is about the data. Right, can you just see all the data? All the numbers of system time has been reduced and um, around 50 percentage of operational costs have been uh, also reduced that um, operation costs as in like the members or like the resources previously assigned to do this process has been um, you know um, saved and so they can reduce and focus on different valuable and you know more strategic tasks so that's that's one of the use case that we did for a retail group in uh, APEC region with um, AKBAT um, solution. Very impressive numbers there and statistics. Love that, Tin. Thanks for uh, giving us a insight into a real use case. Um, and I think that's the productivity that is gained in an organization when RPA is used for automating manual tasks and the acceleration of uh, business velocity that can be also be done with WIM in creating custom applications. So really the unique combination of no code platform like WIM and the RPA capabilities actually ensure delivering large uh, digital transformations at 10x speed. And uh, that's the power of uh, WEM and Akabot together. Another thing that Tin, uh, you, you're working on a project um, with WEM APAC is in legacy modernization space, isn't it? Where the WEM Akabot combination actually speeds up digital discovery of requirements and scripts behind systems um, that are uh, legacy and old and helps to de-risk the entire application discovery and modernization process. So um, really this combination is just uh, uh, amazing and can uh, deliver results and boost productivity and deliver uh, rapid results in the market. So. It's, it's a great partnership, uh, WEMI PAC and FBD Software. So thank you, Tin. Indeed. I think it's time to take some questions. Um, so let me check what 
uh, the questions. I'm going to throw this over to you, uh, Tin. The first question is, um, is it possible for Akabot's IDP solution to deal with different countries' invoice templates? What is the accuracy rate? Sure, sure. So I think um, IDP as in um, smart OCR, intelligent document processing. So um, I'd say the short answer is yes. It can work on different countries' invoices. Um, and of course, it is template free. Um, in regards to accuracy rate, as um, I would say this is a um, improvement solution. So it will increase its accuracy rate over time. And um, in summary, I would evaluate the accuracy rate is from 85% to 99% um, as we go forward and uh, improve the model. So it would take around two to three months to have the highest um, accuracy as 99%. And yeah, that's that That will be my um, answer to the question. Thank you. Thank you, Chen. Well answered. Well, I'm going to throw another one your way. Are you ready? Um, this one says, do you offer training for the internal team if we want to self-deploy bots on the Akabot platform? Sure. Any specific technical requirements for internal implementation teams? Sure, absolutely. So, um, yeah, with Akibot, uh, you know, you have the flexible options to implement automation bot. Um, of course, we can have, um, you know, um, professional, you know, implementation services. But if not, there is definitely uh, free training uh, for, for, you know, people inside uh, your company yourself. So there is free online tutorial that, you know, ones can uh, learn play the video and learn all about the technical side of the Akibot platform, how you create a robot, how you manage it. And there's also like certificates issued on that, you know, um, you know, academy, so to say, to verify your understanding about the product. Um, aside from that, there's also a free um, forum and email support from the product team to make sure you understand the product and you get your support needed when you are learning the, the um, software. So, yeah. Thanks, Dan. Anything free is great. So grab the opportunity to learn Akabot um, and get those certifications, um, as Tin mentioned. The next question is, uh, is there any use cases when no code has achieved complete legacy modernization of business critical applications? Um, I think I will need to answer this. I think um, the project that I have in mind is, is a large insurance company in Europe where together with Akabot uh, and when we're doing a legacy modernization process, I think this insurance company has about a thousand plus number of legacy applications. And what together with uh, WEM and Akabot we're doing is actually uh, looking at these old screens and understanding and, and capturing the requirements before we actually re-platform some of these platforms onto uh, a WEM base, a WEM application platform, an application that's built on WEM. What this does is speeds up your entire legacy modernization process. Um, when a business case was put forward using a traditional uh, method of doing legacy modernization, using traditional methods without um, Akabot and without WEM, the business case was to do it for seven years. But when we brought in these two technologies, um, we could we can achieve this in four years. I don't have any further numbers because this project is still ongoing because it's a four year transformation program of legacy modernization. But I think this number of uh, reducing from a seven year period to a four year period shows you the power and the capability of these two platforms coming together. I hope that's uh, awesome. Uh, awesome. To, yeah. Do we have time for one more question? Um, the question is, what is the typical reduction in numbers when RPA and no code are implemented together in a project? Do you want to talk about the RPA side of things? Like what's what's in without RPA and with RPA, what's the difference? Tim? Sure. sure. So um, when it comes to like uh, results and numbers for RPA, we are normally looking at, um, you know, reducing first processing time. The second thing is availability. And the third thing is about um, you know saving operational costs. So 
processing time from my experience, uh, the numbers we are looking at is usually from 65% to 90% of reduction to reduce the processing time. Availability, it's, it's most likely 24-7 uh, availability. The robot is always there for you to run the automation. And in terms of operational cost, so um, compared to the current cost and the cost after automation, it's usually a range from 50 to 85 percentage. So that's that's the target or the numbers uh, we are usually looking at. It's great, isn't it? In a short time, you can get these results, which is fantastic. Um, with regard to WEM and no code, uh, in terms of numbers, um, you can achieve up to 80% faster in delivery of your custom software development. That's the kind of numbers we're seeing. Um, in a, uh, in a in, in a project for a government uh, diplomatic sort of uh, mission, the company wanted um, a custom application developed uh, and uh, they couldn't wait nine to 12 months, which is what a traditional development would have taken. But they chose WEM because on WEM, we could build that entire application in 12 to 16 weeks. So th that's a compression we're talking about. And that means uh, you are actually, uh, your cost savings as a result, because you have, you're doing development in much shorter time and getting custom software. And as you saw, you're seeing a very visual drag and drop kind of scenarios. It's very easy to work with business and quickly showcase, quickly get IT and business working together to get the outcomes that you want, which is just fantastic. Um, so reducing costs, reducing the timeframes for delivery means you can do more. Plus, as you saw, the web platform, you can do integration, security, UI, all of that on the same platform and even mobile development. That means you're, you're not bringing in so many different technology stacks and you save costs uh, as well. So I hope that gives you a view of both um, Akabot and WIM today. I think we will need to wrap it up. But before we wrap it up, um, Tin, thank you for answering the questions with me. Um, I think we would like to just show you a quick video to show you the technology trends that are happening and where RPA is in the midst of those technology trends and how WIM can also help you with the other technology trends. So let's play that video. Thank you. Thank you. I hope everyone got a glimpse of what's possible with hyper automation, the power of Akabot and WEM coming together from today's session. I want to say a huge thank you for everyone who is attending this event live and for, to those of you who are going to watch this later. Please do reach out to us and we can talk about your specific needs, be it RPA using Akabot or WEM no code enterprise development platform or both combined. Thank you all for joining today. Signing off now. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.